This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Hi, I'm Jason Klein from Fix It 101. If you ever thought about changing the doorknob or fixing a leaky faucet, some jobs just aren't that difficult, and yes, you can do it. If you want to find out how to do those things, listen to Fix It 101, podcast everywhere. From MPB Think Radio, this is Deep South Dining, the show all about the culture of Southern flavor and the good folks that love to stir the pot. Speaking of which, I'm Malcolm White with Carol Palmer and will be your host this morning. Today, we are venturing from the kitchen to the garden. We'll add some fresh homemade flavors to your spring dishes. We've invited Felder Rushing from the Gestalt Gardener to stop by. Talk about fresh spring produce, maintaining a herb garden, and other edible flowers. Also, we will talk peppers, brim, grits, cake, and whatever Carol and I feel like talking about. And you can join the conversation. All right, welcome. It is Monday morning, and Carol. Indeed, uh, it is. It's been Malcolm. a busy weekend. It's been a, a busy weekend. You and I have seen a lot of each other in the past couple of weeks, and today, that's true. We can a, tell our listeners of everything from about brim to fine desserts. But before we go there, I want to wish my wife Kara a happy birthday. Today is her birthday. If you see Kara out and about at the Canopy School, or uh, in the grocery store or just out and around J-Town. Wish her a happy birthday. So happy birthday, happy my birthday, dear. Happy birthday, Kara. And uh, also, speaking of celebrations, uh, we spent two days in Oxford celebrating John. Uh, he was honored by the uh, Women's um, Foundation of Ole Miss for the Legacy Award. Do I have that right? Yeah, it was, it was uh, a beautiful thing. Uh, my husband, John Palmer, received this you know, award. Actually, we'd known about it for a couple of years, a lot to anticipate, but, um, you know, it was really great. I hope you agreed, Malcolm, of just kind of seeing the, the substance of of his life wow. from being a child, from a child. You know, his trajectory of life is just so, so yeah. interesting, and he, he does have a great legacy. Yeah, he grew up in Corinth, uh, uh, you know, not too far from Boonville. He was he and his brother. He has an identical twin brother, Jim, and they grew up as athletes uh, and as sort of troublemakers. He told a great story about the preacher calling he and his brother in, and yeah, and he took the, you know, the preacher. The mother sent him down there. His mother sent him down there to start their religious education, and for the preacher to talk to him. And he took John in first and said, "John, do you know where God is?" Yeah. And John leaves the room and says, Jim, we got to get out of here. God's missing, and they think we got it. <laughs> they think we did it. <laughs> we did it. We did it. We did it. Anyway, we appreciated y'all coming, and what a lovely brunch yesterday. Terrific. We celebrated the day after in our good friend Elizabeth High School, who is probably on the Today Show this morning. Yes. I don't know, but uh, a beautiful brunch with... Shrimp and grits, and the grits were phenomenal. Yeah, you know, my two favorite dishes on the the brunch menu were the the shaved vegetable, marinated vegetable salad. Terrific. Terrific. Uh, There were zucchinis, and there were... There was cheese, and there were carrots, and uh, there were some other vegetables. Yeah, they were long, long, long shaves, yes. not not <clears throat> like grated shaves. Correct. Really good salad. Uh, also, there was a sort of old school, uh, you know, heritage dessert. Yeah, the the meringue. I mean, the <laughs> the hard meringue. And you know, those are so tough to make. I mean, the egg whites, I mean, you have to have the right temperature. If the there's too much humidity, they won't do. But they were gorgeous with strawberries. and. I had not seen that dessert. It's called a, pa- a pavlova. A pavlova. And I had not seen that dessert in many, many years. And it's served as a, a sort of a pastry, and then you put... Whatever you're going to put, these, these were strawberries and and whipped cream on top. It was really. It's named. Um, yeah, it's, what do you know the story? It's named after the great uh, ballerina Anna Pavlova, and it it came from uh, her Australian tour many many years ago. And a chef created this dish in her honor, and it's a crisp meringue base. Mm-hmm. You're very crunchy, and you know with uh, fruit and 
whipped cream. And you can have, like, you know, in Australia, they did, like, a macerated kiwi for mm. her. But, you know, here we do strawberries. And it was beautiful and sunny and southern. Yeah, and what's the name of the uh, structure, the building that we were in, the memory? What's it's the Brant Memory Brandt House at, memory at house. Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. I, I believe it was once the home of Faulkner's brother. John. Oh, John, John Faulkner, Faulkner lived there. Uh, okay. And the reason I, I, th- I think that's right is that during the very brief time that I was enrolled at Ole Miss, <laughs> that would be in 1973 for one semester. Yes, of how, how many colleges, Malcolm? A, a handful. And universities. Yes, I've 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 been around, but during that time, I had a uh, a little uh, Irish Shepherd uh, dog, and it got distemper and passed away. And I, of course, was a student. I lived in the Abbey Hotel, uh, and so I, for some reason, went up to the door of the John Faulkner home, knocked on the door, and asked the lady of the house if I might bury my puppy in their yard and she said yes so yesterday at that brunch we were on the space where where uh yon de do my old irish setter is buried oh now what inspired you to bury your irish setter there of all well places? i didn't I mean, just there knock was nowhere, a random door i could have driven out into the country and uh buried him in the woods but i thought it was kind of a uh, novel idea to bury him there in a historic prominent place. I thought he deserved that. Well, indeed he did, and that house was built in 1837. And I guess the university owns it now, right? They do, and that's where the foundation for the University of Mississippi is. But it it was uh, a grand time. Grand time. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. We had a blast. And uh, besides the uh, pavlova, which we enjoyed at your brunch yesterday, uh, I had the sad um, occasion, also a rejoicing occasion, to leave your brunch and drive to Boonville across the William Faulkner Highway. That's Highway 30 that runs from Oxford to New Albany, through New Albany, over to Boonville, passing cemeteries that I'm familiar with, my old friend uh, Hudson Hickman and uh, David Kowser's houses, very close to where Bruce Browning grew up. Uh, there are many interesting, the Gievel grocery store is on that road. But anyway, drove over to Boonville to attend the memorial service of my great family friend, Edna Drury, who passed. Uh, and uh, we were, our family uh, was one of three or four families that moved to Boonville in the summer of 1965. Uh, the Langstons, the Drury's, Barbara Shackelford and her uh, family moved there Uh and so we were all like the newbies in town, and we we and were you all associated with college? Well, ultimately, but Coach Drury coached the high school. Uh, his wife Edna, who passed, worked at the college with my father. So there were a whole family of women there who worked at Northeast. Besides the sort of high school football, bunch, well, did your were, father go there as coach or president? President. Mm-hmm. Okay, so he coached at Parkinson and, and was president there. At Northeast. Yeah, at Northeast. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, there was another old school dessert that I had there at the church, at the First Baptist Church after the ceremony, and that was um, an angel food cake, which I had not had in forever. I know. Why don't we do angel food cakes much anymore? It's, it's light as a feather and floats like a cloud. <laughs> Indeed. As, you as can hardly angels, hold it down on the angels, plate. As angels do. And what is more appropriate at a memorial service than an angel food cake for a woman like Edna Drury, who was in fact an angel on earth to us in our family? Well, the angel food cake for for those who may be young and uh, not familiar with it is a cake that has no egg yolks in it. It's you know actually made only only with um, egg whites. It's yeah. a sponge-type cake. Correct. Very. And you have to beat the egg whites really stiffly. And there are no other fats in it. And it, it's baked in a, a t- Yeah, but it's flat. It's flat. flat on the top. Okay, I got you. Okay, let's talk fish. Well, okay, let's talk fish. Uh, so last week, sometime during the week, I had the great pleasure of being invited out to your house uh, out in the country in Edwards to John's Go Away Lodge uh, and uh, brought my great friend uh, Richard Ford 
um, the the fantastic uh, writer, Pulitzer Prize Pulitzer winner, Pulitzer Prize winner, grew up in Jackson, uh, now uh, has just recently moved from Maine back to New Orleans where he has lived before. But anyway, so we were invited out to fish, and because man, he'd been dreaming of fish, he'd been dreaming. And when he when I was in Maine, Richard and I had dinner, and we talked about one day he would leave Maine, come back to New Orleans, and he and I would go fishing and. You and John were able to fulfill that dream. Well, not only fulfilled the dream, but you caught 60 brim before <laughs> lunch. Yeah, and when we say brim, we're, we're not talking about little sunfish here. We're talking brim the size of catcher's mitts. <laughs> there, were some, there were some big ones in there. These brim are from another world. I don't yeah. know where y'all get them. I don't know. John how. John pets them and sends them to the spa. But it, Boy, those were some great. And we caught bass and a few other fishes, but mostly we were focused on brim fishing. We were fishing with crickets. And as they say in the country, we tore them up. You did tear and them up. And then we had this glorious, glorious uh, brim dinner. And we, but first of all, Henry... Mitchell Henry Mitchell was our sort from of Edwards. from Edwards was our guide. Oh, that and he, was Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson, guide. yeah. But Henry was the fillet man. Yes, and he uh, is the uncle of Patrick Wilson, our fishing guide, and he had a technique that is so unusual. He actually butterflies butterflies the brim and takes all of the bones out of it. Malcolm, you and Richard Ford actually yeah. went up and watched him do that. And I, I have a video of him doing. I've never seen this uh, process before. And it turns out the reason he knew how to do it was he used to work in Jack at Jackson Packing Company and he was a butcher his whole life. And so he had sort of you know, he had either stylized this or had seen it and made it his own. But what a great technique where you get you get a lot of fish and almost no bone. Yeah, it was a beautiful thing. Beautiful, a beautiful thing. thing. And then they were fried up nicely with coleslaw and French fries, and we had a great dinner. And you know, it's that time of year uh, for brim fishing uh, and and having a, a delightful meal of such. So everybody, go get uh, a line and a pole and a cricket. <laughs> That's right. Why wouldn't you? Uh, so you want to cover a few of these tidbits that I found? Uh, well, yeah, here, there, you and, and I've been th- swapping some tidbits. Yes, we all week, do. especially especially you. So. Why don't you go? Yeah, so my grandkids uh, spent the night last last weekend. They we had a sleepover, and and they love waffles. And so we we there is no we. Kara makes waffles for the kids and freezes them and keeps them there. And so I, I saw this tidbit about how the best way to reheat leftover waffles to keep them crispy. And it says because waffles taste best when they are slightly crispy, the toaster is the ultimate and best option for heating and giving your waffles a slightly Crisp. crunchy texture, sort of returning them to their original state of bliss when they are first made. Malcolm, I think you've done the people a great service by passing on this tip. <laughs> okay, and I don't have a tip, but I have a question for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bacon. Yes. Fingers uh, or fork? For me, bacon is like toast. You eat it with your fingers. You pick it up and you eat it with your fingers. Um, but there is nothing, I suppose, wrong with taking your fork and clipping it and uh, putting it in a bite of something else. But I can't see a knife and fork when it comes to bacon. But that's just me. Yeah, I saw a poll, and I, I think most people are fingers. Yeah, I, I think that's right. How about this tidbit? What is the... What is the major U.S. city with the fewest chain restaurants in the country? And I think we'll leave that open as a question. If any listener thinks they know what major United States city has the fewest chain restaurants, give us a call and uh, we'll give you a prize if if you can name this well, a city. Fish. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if you're interested, see if you can name. The large, the the main American city with the fewest chain restaurants. It's not Pearl. It's not Gulfport. It's not even in Mississippi. You would say it is not in Mississippi. So call us if you're interested. And 
fresh from the Juke Joint Festival in oh, yeah. Clarksdale, yeah. Mississippi, oh, our yeah. good friend Felder. Do I look like I've had a tamale or two too many? Yeah. <laughs> you can never have two too many tamales, my oh, friend. Listen, when you get to my, my age and size, half a dozen is enough. <laughs> Till you get to the next stand. Right. Hey, you're a young thing. How are you, Carol? I'm good. Um, well, hey, so, hey, hey, wait, before we get yeah. started, y'all had a program one time about hot dogs that was just <laughs> wow. And, and I just got to ask, do y'all know the difference between pronto puffs and corn dogs? Hmm, good question. I do not. Well, you got to research it at the state fair. That's, that's where the work is done. And, and sometimes they sell pronto the corn dogs and they call them pronto puffs, and I resent that. Okay, well, tell us the difference. Well, please tell us, because I just thought it was a marketing difference. No, corn dogs are rolled in cornmeal. Pronto pups are rolled in pancake batter. <gasps> oh, so, so is, that de- that determines which one you want to put mustard on. I'm so, just saying. Oh, now, no. this is deep this is, south. This is diet. very. This is so deep. <laughs> you know, Felder, I lived in the Midwest for a few years, and Jell- I always saw them. They, they had pronto pups, and I just thought that was a Midwestern thing, like they call Coca-Cola pop. Yeah, it could you be. want to go have a pot? soda, a soda, soda? yeah, in the je- jello like, on a stick. <laughs> you want to have a pronto pup? And I'm going eh. C- corn cornmeal so versus know. pancake batter. You know, listen to Deep South Dining if you want to know the truth <laughs> about food. So it's like sweet or savory there. Uh, exactly. I never thought you about know, it like that. Mustard or ketchup. You know, mm-hmm. there you go. I'm just saying. And and one other oddball tidbit is uh, we all did this as a kid. It was a terrible thing to do, but it happened to me at at, at the at the the Juke Joint Festival, all that food, I salivated from under my tongue, and it squirted out. That's called, do you know what it's called? I, no, but I've done it. Gleek. 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 I, I gleeked all over Clarksdale. Oh, my gosh. And Java, you were there to see this. Java, you yeah, see it? I was, yeah, I was there, and I, and I knew all about gleeking because that was the way we used to kind of torment people back in the day. We would shoot it, you know, see, Jermaine, <laughs> you. back there on the phone, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, this is, y'all are foodies. Here we go. Uh, yeah, No, this is good stuff. So you guys were at the Juke Joint Festival. Yeah. And uh, what'd you see, what'd you hear, and what'd you eat? Well, you know, I'm from the Delta. I'm so Delta. I flunked out of Moorhead. I flunked out of Mississippi Delta Junior. And I'm a retired college associate well, As we call it, USC, Moorhead. the University of Sunflower County. Yeah. yeah or Harvard yeah, on yeah. the highway. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's real interesting because my partner's from England, and she has different eyes, you know. And she says <laughs> it's not only it, the, the visuals are so different, so much, so many uh, uh, things painted on, you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of artwork. But the sounds and the smells, the foods, mm. you know, the flavors, but the fra- all these fragrances rolling together from different kinds of street food and the sounds because it segue from one uh, act to another. It was just incredible, just incredible. And, uh, but I would like to give a real quite a kind of shoot, uh, 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 a foodie thing, yeah. uh, but they've uh, Amos Harvey, who's from up in uh, Coldwater. Uh, yeah. You know Amos? Yeah. Have, he's have a, you, uh, with, was he with Fat Possum at one time? Yeah, but, but now he's Red Panther Brewing Company. Right. And ah. they just opened up, and I got the first public beer, ale, <gasps> from their place. But he also has root beer, non-alcoholic, and ginger beer, non-alcoholic, and they are superb. Brewed downtown. Clarksdale. You know, he used to brew at that other place in Water Valley. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm at. Water that's Valley. where he was I, I, living. I, I he was Coldwater. living in okay. Water yeah, Valley. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha. But anyway, root beer and ginger beer. Okay, and the name again. Uh, Red uh, Red Panther Brewing Company. Red Panther. Right downtown. Right. So uh, anyway, that's all my. Uh, oh, I uh, would like to mention we were driving back. Uh, you know, meander down through the Delta, uh-huh. and we came across the most incredible gardens where people are just growing food as flowers. You know, they don't grow, have you know, people have vegetable gardens, but now uh-huh. they just have flower beds with vegetables just like flowers. Which well, makes like sense. what? What's a, what's a vegetable like a flower? Peppers, uh, kale, collards, uh, 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 tomatoes. Mixing you know, it lettuces, with? Lettuces, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in and, and a flower bed, they'll have a pot sitting in the middle of it with lettuces growing in it and garlic oh. and stuff. Is that what your photo was you showed this morning? Uh, that, that's actually my, my my front porch. I got two pots just loaded. You was, look at all this stuff I brought, all this stuff. Wow. That's from, from those pots. Yeah. Well, hey, it, save it, it, it. I want a salad for lunch of fresh grains. It's, 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 or, it's organic because I'm too lazy to do anything. But <laughs> yeah. just, just from the back of my truck, because people think gardening is hard, growing food is hard. Uh, 
there's a uh, a group in. Uh, let, let me. I gotta get this right. I was at a pub last night, right? <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> and the guy next to me, a guy named Ryan, he told me his mother, who's Rita McElvin from the Hazelhurst Garden Club, they spent the weekend putting together what they call spaghetti pots. Ah, uh, and a spaghetti pot must have, let's see, parsley, basil, oregano, oregano, oregano rosemary, thyme. Yeah. All right. That's good. Hazelhurst Garden Club put together uh, spaghetti pots. And this is something kids can do, but it's also something that people who live in apartments or don't have a lot of space or they're busy or whatever, a little spot of space, a pot mm-hmm. full of stuff. that Pot, pot, it, pot full of joy. Yeah, and it, and it looks good. Looks you know, great. It, I planted it, it, one for Kara. I have uh, rosemary, basil, uh, thyme, and wait, oregano. There, wait, there's rosemary. There's basil. There's <laughs> purple uh, oregano. There's thyme. Here's uh, uh, oregano. Here's mint. All growing in the back of my pickup truck. Don't tell me you can't garden. You, well, right. It's just a pot. It's just a pot yeah. full of soil that happens to be in a truck instead of on a, a porch or, or outside your kitchen. Well, I love that because, you know, I, I carry herbs wherever I go mm-hmm. when I'm going to cook at somebody's house. But if I had them in my car, if I got it, I mean, it would be so handy. Well, the every, <laughs> every, every, Everyday Gourmet had the biggest herb sale in the state for years and years and years. You know, in this felder, it started probably in 83 or 84 when you couldn't get fresh herbs. You couldn't get them. You couldn't and, get them. you know, Alice Waters in, mm-hmm. in the Bay Area, yeah. uh, the great chef, I mean, she really started teaching all of us that what we had, we were looking to Europe for our food, Yeah, that what we had in the United States was beautiful and you know we we have our own cuisine we didn't need somebody else's and so she was using these fresh herbs in her cooking and you could not buy them them. in mississippi so we found a lady in louisiana and she would drive over with flats of them in her car like you know on the visor in the front, you know, in the back. I mean, she was loaded down, and people would come, like, at 530 in the morning with flashlights to nab them, and then people would fight over them, like somebody would get the last basil plant. And and look how far we've come. And the late, great Ed Nichols, he started Mm. growing stuff, custom growing stuff for y'all. He did. But but now, you know, now it's easy to do, and, you know, it's kind of sad. Uh, I helped take care of the your herb sale got us to start planting herbs at the Agriculture Museum, a little doctor thing, mm-hmm. which which being newly, I said refurbished, you said reherbished. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. And uh, there were some kids there the other day, and I was getting to smell, you know, oregano and rosemary, what does it smell like? And I got them to smell some mint and said, what does it smell like? And she said, uh, oh, uh, 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 cold, cold mint, um, something you when you have a sore throat. Oh, a uh, throat lozenge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she she said a throat lozenge. That's what <laughs> mint smell like to her. <laughs> we got to get a grip on this, folks. So we asked a question before we went on break about what major American city has the least amount of fast food joints. Do you want to take a shot, Felder? We got a caller here who has a has a thought on the matter. A, a city, a major city. Yeah, has the least amount of fast foods. Well, let's like- take Jackie from Terry. What you got, Jackie? Hello, hello, I'm here. Yeah, so you're you're saying? Oh, okay. I think it might be Washington D.C. Washington My D.C. Because, and I may be wrong, but you don't see many. And I know she's like, when she comes to Mississippi, she likes to go to Sonic and Chick Fil A. <laughs> you know, finally, I think they finally got their first, or uh, maybe a couple of Chick Fil A's up there. But anyway, that's just my ballpark guess. Well, that's a great guess, but you're wrong. So it's it's okay. it's not our nation's capital. Uh, okay. Felder, did you want to take a shot? I guess. Nope. Because I mean, everywhere I go, you know, I, I never go any place that doesn't have a Waffle House. Well, if it doesn't have a Waffle House, I ain't going. Java knows. I'm sorry. What do I know? <laughs> <laughs> it's live radio, and it's a lot going on. Yeah, the major American city with the least fast food. Do y'all want me to give the answer? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking about this. Um, it is all the way on the west coast. It is San Francisco. San Francisco. And Alex I, Water, blame it on her. And I thought that was very, very interesting because in the article that you shared, Malcolm, it said that you cannot find a Chick-fil-A, Burger King, or a Dairy Queen in the city limits of San Francisco. Yeah. And I'm like, well, 
what do the people eat? <laughs> At locally owned restaurants. Which is great. And, so, and it made me think about uh, Jackson. You know, we have so many local restaurants, new ones popping up just about every other week or something like that. Um, that, you know, that local imprint is something that needs to be cherished. And it's our job to patronize and promote them. Right. But I have another, I had another guest and... My guess was Asheville, North Carolina. That, that would make sense. For you know, for a while, um, I had a place up in Black Mountain, and just through my Southern Foodways Alliance affiliation, was you know knew a lot yeah. of chefs there. That is a town of ninety thousand and you souls. Never, it still feels small. A hundred and fifty-five local restaurants in that size town. Yeah. And they even have an independent restaurant association, and they, you know, they take it really seriously. I, I worked uh, with a group, uh, a fellow named Carlo Petrini. He started Slow Food in Italy. He's saying, we're not going to have McDonald's in Rome. We're going to do local food, local cuisine, local traditions, you know, share what, you know, we're going to keep it Italian. And I worked with him, and that's where Slow Garden came from. Which is really, slow, I, I, don't, I don't know about slow gardening. I do yeah, know well, about slow food. It's the same thing as home cooking versus chef, horticulture chefs versus home cooks, mm. gardening versus horticulture. And basically, it, growing your own food, like all this stuff right here, I grow in a pot. And a lot of people say, I don't know how to get started. Get a pot, pretty good size pot. If you can put your arms around it, just barely, that's about big enough, and just shove stuff in it. <laughs> Some of us stuff some in it. Of, it's, it's, it's like it's like going to a to a to a, a blue plate special. You get a meat and three and peach cobbler. Throw it all on the same plate. Pour some gravy on it. That's the way gardening can be. Just, and it's time to plant, right? It Elder? is time. It is time. <clears throat> you know, I'm starting to harvest all my lettuces and you know, kale and right. and uh, my potatoes and my little mm-hmm. English peas. But it's time to st- start sending out. I brought this thing full of. Peppers. I, I Ooh, grow my own peppers. hot peppers. I know she got a pepper book. What over kind there. of peppers yep. are those? Uh, this is the cayenne, mm-hmm. but it's a super cayenne. And if I open this up, this little thing of dried peppers, it will run us out of the studio. Well, don't All open it, it takes is a pinch. <laughs> but I grew it myself, and it's not that much, Carol, and I'm not saving the world. But every time I use a little bit of this, I feel better than my neighbors. And so you're drying it. <laughs> you're yeah. drying your peppers. Yeah, what I do is I, as I slice them, I put them on a, uh, on a baking sheet, and I yeah. just turn it on real low for a couple, three hours. I have to leave the house and open all the windows and it gets crumbling i just dry it and all it takes is a pinch that is a great idea because i have attempted i mean i do grow a few because i particularly mm. like thai food and i like thai chilies but you know, i just use them pull you know pull them off yeah the thing. And, but that and you can freeze them you yeah, know that would be a way bat. to keep the love going well see i can take this stuff in my backpack when i go overseas yeah they don't check it at the airport. Well, looking like I look, they look. They check everything. <laughs> they check everything. Now, I used I used to take back in the eighties when we started the everyday gourmet. There were several things I couldn't live without, and I carried not a backpack, but I carried. Well, mine's a, a man pepper, purse. A pepper grinder. Yeah, it's not sea, a fanny pack. Yeah, is it? sea salt. A little thing of olive oil. You remember when you could only get like. Uh, can we say brands like the old Pompeii at the grocery store? Oh, yeah. And we started at the Everyday Gourmet importing olive oil. So I carry a little bottle of uh, olive oil yeah. and then fresh ground coffee beans. Well, a single pepper plant is a pretty plant. It's as pretty as any kind of flower. It's colorful, and, and it can last you well into the next season of stuff to season your food with. And, it's, again, it's a little it's a, a quality of life thing, mm-hmm. you know, that yeah. you grew a little bit. I grow all the oregano, all the uh, uh, rosemary, all the, the the basil I can possibly use in a pepper in a pot. Right. You know, so Do you grow say, arugula? I have some, but I don't like to lay it to you. See, yeah. I love it. I crave it. And um, Neil Strickland, Neil and Janie yeah, Strickland, yeah. who live in Raymond, have been bringing me arugula every week, and John and I sent him sent him a picture. You know, all we do is wash it, put salt and pepper on it, splash a little olive oil, and squeeze the lemon, yep. and oh, delicious! Yeah, well, you know, it just grows like lettuce. We have we have three seasons of garden, four seasons of garden. You can plant in the late winter and spring. Lettuces and arugula and chives and all that kind of stuff. We can plant in the fall, you know, collards and broccoli and carrots and stuff. But we have time in Mississippi to plant a summer garden this week, and it completely harvest, completely finish, and have enough time to start a second summer crop 
and by the end of July, 1st of August, and have a crop before fall. Our friends up north, th- th- their planting date is Memorial Day. That's a month away mm-hmm. before they even start thinking. So we have time for two back-to-back summer gardens, a fall garden and spring garden, and you can do it in a pot. Mm. And a- you are welcome to call and talk to Felder Rushing about your own herb garden or edible I, flowers. It, herb, herb is English. For herb, which is French for herb. <laughs> well, I'm going to be French, and you can be English. Well, you know, and friend, Malcolm can be. I'll be from Boonville. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it, it, French say soil, English say dirt. They're yeah. the same thing. Come on. All right, Dave South Dining right here on MPB Think Radio. We are glad you are dialed in, and I wanted to say, Carol, you know, walking around in this world in which we live, I am so flattered. Uh, to for people to stop and talk to me about listening to this show. They tell me they listen to it every week on Monday morning. They don't miss it. It's on their way to do this or to do that, and they do it when they do this. And then a lot of people say they listen to the rebroadcast on Sunday mornings, and a lot of people say that they just listen to the app that they download. and, and it, But it's great to hear people it is. It reinforce is. It's what very, we do here every Monday. It's very rewarding. Really, really and is. And Felder knows about this because he's been doing it forever. Yeah, yeah. I've been, yeah long time, <laughs> long time, you know. And I'm making it all up, as y'all know, you know. <laughs> if I don't know something, I can be a real jerk about it. But if I know something, I'm going to stand my guns. And the fact is, gardening isn't heart they've been doing it for thousands of years we just all horticulture it up can i share a quick recipe with y'all sure go ahead it's a it's a metaphor for gardening versus horticulture it's from a book called white trash cooking okay you know the book ernie mickler you know ernie mickler he came to the everyday gourmet and he sadly left us too early well what you do is take an old pie from the day old rack at the supermarket and you can eat it in the parking lot out of the box but what you do is you take it home after it's been baked and you punch holes in the top and sprinkle on a little sugar and don't load it down and then you pour rum or brandy on it getting into all the holes Mm. and then set fire to it (gasps) oh my gosh this is right we'll see that what we've done we've made something simple and easy and beautiful and made it more and more interesting to fewer and fewer people and that's what horticulture does to gardening very good. And yeah. Felder, I do love a flambe. Every every time I make <laughs> a day of pie I flambe, make, yeah, yeah, a cocoa van and get to to pull, you know, pour the spirits on and light it up. I take a picture of it and post it. Well, you can tell uh, Malcolm and I don't do that because we still have eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Java, we have a new app feature. Tell us all about it. I forgot to mention it in the first segment. Well, yeah, this is it's a real exciting feature, and I think we, Deep South Dining, is one of the only shows that hasn't interacted with it, so um, our Deep South Dining family uh, help us out. But yeah, it's a brand new feature inside the MPB Public Media app. It's the Talk to us feature um you open the app you click the menu button talk to us and deep south dining is actually at the top of the list you can send us a voice note you can send us a video um so if you may be cooking in the kitchen you can uh you know show us what you're working with also you can send a picture um real great way to interact with the show and you can do it anytime you don't have to wait until nine o'clock on monday morning you can do it anytime you're um in the kitchen or have a question leave us a voice note we'll get it and um we've played several of them over the air for different shows but not deep south dining yet so Hmm. we're ready yeah we are ready ready and willing and speaking of talking to us yeah jesse's on the phone from mobile alabama i'm going to talk about pepper of choice for callers hello jesse how's it going real good how are you nope Uh uh-oh by then i think we lost well we lost jesse What's your pepper of choice for collards, uh, Felder? I, you know, I, I don't eat collards. I'm a kale guy. You don't fool with them. No, I don't. And because you know, it's just it's just slick. You know, I'm just I like texture. You, I like you that do okra. Bl- I like the t- if you fry okra and put a lot of ketchup on it, I will eat it. But, but I'm you don't a, do I, slick or slime. I, I, do you have I don't. a slime? Uh, you have a, a yeah. slime aversion? Well, it's not so much it's that. It's called but, mucilage. <laughs> mucilage. Mus- isn't that a horrible word? Mm, makes me want to clear my throat real quick. Uh, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I actually like the, the type of kale that's called lacinata. Some people call it the Tuscan blue. 
It's a uh, matter of fact. You got uh, some over got there in your pile? To have some. No, I don't. I don't. But it's got it's got a real pretty blue plant, and it's kind of textured. Some people call it dinosaur kale because it got that dinosaur looking texture to it. Hmm. But anyway, it's sweet. It's what the the Tuscans used for uh, minestrone for 200 years, ah. and it's pretty. It's blue as it can be, and it'll take 10 below zero. Goodness. Wow. Do you do kale salad in addition to cooked kale? I, 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 I use it I think, in soups. I think it's no. Yeah. yeah I'm not going to go there. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Jesse uh, has rejoined us here. Jesse, we'll talk to you about the peppers. Are you there? No. Okay. Well, Java says, hold that line. He's trying to do the app. Yeah, he's trying to do the new feature. <laughs> hey, Jesse, how are you, buddy? Good. So there's spring break all over down here. It just depends on which school you're in or out of this week. So mom would have a pepper in the greens, whether it was collards, my favorite, or it was turnips, or really, really soggy. It just depends on what week she was doing. And a little pepper about the size of a pinky that if she did not get it out and it ended up on your plate, you were grabbing something to drink as fast as you get your hands on it. What was that pepper? That's a $50,000 question. Oh, you're, okay. the size of a pinky, but it packed a punch if you happen to slap the whole thing in your mouth. Okay. Was Otherwise, it, a, it, gave you, it gave you a one or one and a half fire alarm, like you would add the chili, but it was in green. Okay. Okay, was it, was it green or was it red? It was usually red. It was sawed off green, but as it matured, it would go to red. Okay. Sounds like my touch. <laughs> It could, could be well. there's or so, Serrano. There's, there's so, so many, many chilies. There's so, many, so many Serrano. Matter of fact, that's what this is, Serrano. It's Serrano. Oh, okay. And they're, and they're mm-hmm. little and they're skinny, but about the size of my pinky, and they're real thin and pointed. Might be what it is. All right. Thanks, Jesse. We appreciate you listening and calling and tell us, telling us about the hot pepper that your mama put in the collards. That's always good to hear. We've also got Rebecca calling from Fulton, Mississippi. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? Rebecca's not ready yet. Rebecca is not ready for prime time. All right. What about Mikey from Mobile? I see these names, and uh, I think Mikey I'm is ready. ready for prime Mikey's time. Mikey's ready to rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, no, really, I'm going to try to be quick because uh, you do have other people to, to, with whom to speak. Um, uh, I don't, and you may have already mentioned this, but my favorite of the peppers, I've grown all those others and enjoyed them and love them. But the easiest that I've found, in fact, because it keeps replacing itself, in fact, I'm about to take it back outside because I grow it as a house plant inside during the winter, is the habanero. The habanero. The humble yeah. habanero. It's a good one. It ain't humble, honey. If you ever bite into one, you're going <laughs> to you know, I'll never say that again. <laughs> well, thanks for that uh, tidbit on the habanero. We, uh, I think we've connected to Rebecca from Fulton here now. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? I'm doing great. How are y'all doing? Really well, thank you. Well, good. Um, no, I just had a comment. I, I, y'all were talking about about flambe stuff, and 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 something came up on on my Facebook memories about Brennan uh, going uh, being up for bankruptcy, and and the guy saved it from bankruptcy. But anyway, during the segment, mm. they showed him making uh, banana foster, and you know. It, Evidently, they're they're famous for this, you know, because it was developed there. But um, but it was cool to watch them with the rum, and it, you know, nearly yeah. singeing your eyebrows and such. But uh, and I also want to ask, just does um, I'm surprised that that New Orleans was not in the top, you know, in the top five or whatever. Uh, Agreed. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, we don't know who the top five were. The article that I shared only said the number one uh, U.S. major city that, that had the, the least fast food. So New Orleans may be in the top five. You could be absolutely right. No idea. Let's send Java off researching that. Okay. He loves doing research. 
Rebecca, thanks so much uh, for listening, for uh, talking about the flambe. We all love to set fire to things. I, I do have a favorite hot pepper, by the way. I grow it a lot, and it can actually overwinter a lot of times. It's called the chili pekin, little bird's eye pepper. Pekin. I they're love about the size of a little pepper. English pea, and they are, they're called poppers. And you pop one in there, it gets your digestive system going, it cools you off, and I mean, mm. it'll light you up. We, You don't need drugs if you got hot peppers, <laughs> because they will give you all the endorphins you can handle. But little poppers, and they're pretty little plants. Yeehaw! You know, uh, we have a caller, Tom, from New Albany, where I drove through yesterday on the William Faulkner Highway between Oxford, New Albany, on my way to Boonville. And uh, Tom is calling. He has a comment about the... Bird's eye chili. Hey. Wow. Hey. <laughs> Cosmic. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's seldom must be doubling up on his paycheck this week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's huge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have no idea how much money we make doing this. Uh, well, I spent over a decade in radio, so I, I think I can understand. I can tell. From uh, 83 to 83. Anyway, um, but my dad had a, uh, we grew up in a pot, and we called it the bush. About waist high in a in a knee high pot that grew these little bitty, a little bigger than a BB. Yeah. And you you stuff them down in a little glass carafe and pour vinegar over them, set them in the kitchen window, and those things. I think we we used the pepper juice out of that bottle for at least a decade before he had to change the peppers out. <laughs> <laughs> That's getting your money's worth. Yeah. Now, Carol, Carol was right when she said she liked Thai food. It's, it's called a Thai chili, but it's native to Mexico. And they're between 50 and 100,000 Scoville. So, yeah. Wow. Habanero is about 250,000. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if I remember right, they're, they're hotter than a jalapeno, but less than a habanero right. on the pepper scale. And but they'll, they still li- they'll still light you up. Oh, oh, definitely, definitely, especially if you've not been, like, broke in on it from the, you know, <laughs> age, of, age of 10 eating eating your, your collard greens with pepper sauce on them. But the two kinds, uh, I forget the name of the difference of the variety, but there's one that's only a bead. It just grows like a round ball mm-hmm. in clusters, looks like a holly plant, to, uh, you know, at a distance. Uh, but there's another one that grows, and they're really, sh- they're short. They're like an inch, inch and a quarter long, and they're tapered. And supposedly those are the hotter of the variety. I guess because there's more meat to them or something. I don't know. but Maybe more but, seeds? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, I don't think they're big enough even to have seeds. I think the whole uh, strictness inside is the seed. Huh. But that, that, that plant, he, he brought it. I forget where he brought it from, but he brought it over. And we, we would keep it in the well house in the winter and set it out in the summer and just, just keep picking from it. And it's still going to this day. He's been gone a little over six years, but it's still going. So I imagine it's it's got a thirty year lineage on it. They just they just won't stop growing. Wow. So this is a perfect area to grow up. That, All right, Tom. That is thanks. A great story. Yeah, too, that is. That it's a family he, he heirloom. Do a, and, and put it in the well house. Yeah. I heard that. Right. That's country. Right. Indeed. Thanks, Tom. We appreciate you listening, calling, and sharing about the. Bird's eye chili, the family heirloom chili. I don't know if y'all remember, I used to have, back in the late 80s, 90s, I had an old brown pickup truck when I first started growing my garden in the back, and I had wooden sideboards on the side, and I had foot and a half long red chili peppers painted on that wooden sideboard. So I mean, I probably I was, still have pictures of yeah, that truck. Yeah, I got a picture of, of me and the sweet potato queen there too. Oh boy, here we go. All right, should we go to Julie uh, in Brookhaven now? Hello, Julie. She also wants to talk about peppers, Felder. Well, you know, it's really funny because I'm calling about the exact same thing that the last caller called about, which are actually scientifically called Chilton peppers. They're right. Right. and those are the ones that are about the size of a BB. And they're round. Now, bird's eye peppers. They're now, wrong. They're longer. Peppers, yes. Children's peppers can often be called bird's eye peppers, but bird's eye peppers actually look more like the champagne glass that was modeled after Marie Antoinette, you know, um, uh, to put it, you know. What a, a, a part a, of her anatomy. Yeah, been there. Correct, correct. And so they're a little bit bigger. They're not quite round. But those children's peppers, they are. They are family heirlooms. I've got my grandfather's who... You know, grew them on his property in Macomb for the last, you know, century or so. And so, um, but we love them. There's a, you know, we get the peak of our harvest around August, and they, we get them until 
November, December until they freeze, you know. Um, but what we love to do is we love to take them and dry them out and then grind them into pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. It's hotter than regular red pepper flakes, but they have so much flavor, mm. and they last forever. It's pretty plant, too. Yeah. Thanks so much, Julie, for listening and calling. We've got Carrie in Madison, Mississippi, uh, wants to speak once more about peppers. Hello, Carrie. Good morning. How are you? So my mother, my mother ate peppers so hot that they would make your eyes water like even if you were nearby what she was eating. It would make your nose <laughs> run. Yeah, like Java's eyes are watering right now just because Felder brought in. walked into the studio. <laughs> That's but, one way to keep I the kids believe, away. I believe there's an anti-aging factor because she, like, I've heard of this about the capsaicin. Is that the right word for mm-hmm. the heat in yeah. peppers? Like, it's an antioxidant. And she looked like the youngest 80-something-year-old there was. I, hmm. I just believe peppers are good for your beauty. Well, also, keeping the kids away from you will keep you young, too. <laughs> And eating peppers, you said it'll run, 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 run them away. <laughs> so it's like the hot dog show. Now it's the pepper show. <laughs> okay. We could have women all over Mississippi chowing down on peppers, on peppers to keep yeah. our beauty. Yeah, this, yeah, this little chili pekin thing, the, the, whatever you want to call it, cool little plant, pretty as it can be. And and these are red or the yeah tiny little red things color red. yeah they call them bee- I'm Everybody really having a lot of bees. fun this morning because okay. I'm following Carol. along with pictures. I have a book uh, by Jean Andrews who is a wonderful food writer, and Felder and I both have this book. Yours, from yours looks as beat up as mine. Too. 1985, <laughs> and it has you know beautiful illustrations. Yeah. So everybody, every time someone calls in about a pepper, I'm enjoying looking at it. We've been talking about peppers and all these herbs I brought back from the back of my pickup truck. I'm starting to get hungry, y'all. Yeah, it's about that time. You know, if you didn't have a big breakfast, it's <laughs> eat a pepper. <laughs> I'm a pepper. What's the hottest pepper you've ever eaten? Uh, and you know, and I've, live to I've, tell. I've, I've had the scorpion pepper, which is about five times hotter than habanero. Mm-hmm. And no, the answer is no. Didn't wasn't nope no joy <laughs> wasn't worth it no I, I don't go for the <laughs> took me a week to grow some more skin <laughs> I don't go for that kind of hot I don't either I don't either you know the, people you love know, it it's, it's nice but you know just a little just a little hint a little dabble will tell you that's right it's the Szechuan pepper yeah. for me I've Ooh. had so much fun with you guys this morning thank you for thanks having for coming uh, by thanks for you coming bet. wow we loved it. Felder Rushing the Gestalt Gardener here on our Monday morning show Deep South Dining. We are produced by Mississippi Public Broadcasting. We're funded by the generous contributions from folks like yourself, and we thank you. We, uh, our producer is Java Chapman for my co-host, Carol Palmer. And our special guest today fell to rushing. I am Malcolm White. We ask that you now stay tuned for Marsha Ramsey's program, Now You're Talking, followed by Southern Remedy at 11. And we do thank you for listening and ask you to join us every Monday morning right here at 9 o'clock, heard only on MPB Think Radio, and again on Sundays at 9. So stay tuned and be well and eat well. Check you later. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone 